Hey DCC fans and RPG gamers of any system, I'm Sam with 3D6 and today I'm coming at you with a system neutral product review of The Monster Alphabet by Joe Bittman, published by Goodman Games. But before we get into that, I just want to give a huge shout out to everyone on r slash DCC RPG. We reached out to y'all about the channel, the response was positive, thanks to everyone who subscribed, it means a lot to us. So without further hesitation, let's get into this review of The Monster Alphabet. All right, so as we mentioned in the intro, today we're taking a look at The Monster Alphabet. This is by Joe Bittman and Michael Curtis, published by Goodman Games, with a forward by Frank Mincer, illustrations by Errol Otis, Doug Kovacs, Peter Mullen, Stephen or Stefan Pogue, please tell me in the comments how you pronounce his name so I stop embarrassing myself, and Jim Holloway, who did this awesome cover artwork. On the reverse side, we have the Monster Alphabet, an A to Z reference for classic monster design. Designing monsters is as easy as A, B, C. What foul beast slosh and gibber in the furthest reaches of your skull? Unleash your demons with the Monster Alphabet, a compilation of monster design elements keyed to the letters of the alphabet. A is for Android, B is for Breath Weapon, C is for Crossbreed. Game masters of any rule system will find inspiration for creating strange new abominations. Random tables of traits, powers, and lore. All inspiring illustrations by your favorite fantasy artists, old and new, and rolling handfuls of dice directly on monster generation diagrams. The entries are accompanied by fantastic art from classic fantasy illustrators and are compatible with all fantasy role-playing games. This has a cover price of $19.99 and it's available at goodmangames.com. Don't forget the hyphen whenever you're typing that into your browser. So let's uh, open this thing up and take a look inside. Got a Goodman Games Gazette with my issue, or edition rather. It's uh, just a little newspaper of news and stuff that is happening with Goodman Games. I don't know if this comes with all issues or editions, but it came with mine and that is cool. First thing you're going to see here is an awesome in-sheet uh, illustration by Doug Kovacs. There's so much going on here that I recommend you just pausing your video right now and try and take it all in, or buy a copy of this book yourself so you can look at it as long as you want. My favorite thing though is this centipede wizard guy suffering from some spell corruption. He's got like some imps and fairies riding on his back along with a fly-headed woman. Super cool. Moving on, we've got our title page, uh, Mullen Piece, and this is very reminiscent of the title sheet in the DCC core rulebook. Over here, we've got our table of contents. You can pause and take a look at everything in here if that interests you. If not, we're just going to move right along to the random monster drop table, which is this guy right here, and this is one of the coolest features of the book. So the idea here is you take a handful of D12s, everything on this is a D12 table, drop it right on the page. Wherever it lands, you tally up what the number is. It could be the body of a hound with the head of an elephant and wings of an owl with legs or hind parts of a badger. So if your party has fought every monster that they could possibly imagine and you need something new and crazy, this is going to help you figure that out. You've got number of heads, quills, stingers, number of tails, horns, number of horns, number of ears. The possibilities are endless. This, uh, the concept was by Joe Bittman and it was drawn by Stephen or Stefan Pogue. Once again, somebody tell me how to pronounce his name. And this is a super cool concept, so much so that I am actually probably going to take this down to a print shop and have it scanned and enlarged so I could drop it on a table this big and drop a handful of dice on it. Yeah, over here we've got a forward by Frank Minzer or Mincer. Uh, there's no T in this one and there is definitely a T here. So uh, we're stopping the typo, guys. There you go, Goodman Games. I found one for you. So we've got the uh, forward by Mincer. He's the guy that wrote the third iteration of the D&D basic rule set that came after both the uh, Holmes box set and the um, Moldve set. Another Kovacs piece. Something you'll see in this that differentiates it from the dungeon alphabet is the fact that the artwork is incorporated with the tables and text a lot more than you'll find in this other book. And I think that just is really helps you just immerse you in everything that's going on here. We've got an intro by Michael Curtis, and he's going to give you some notes on the funky dice used. Uh, the Dungeon Alphabet, pull this over one more time, doesn't use funky dice quite as often as 
this book is going to. The Dungeon Alphabet, I think, only used D30 tables in addition to just the standard polyhedral sets. This, you're going to get just everything. And today, I have some of my weird dice. So if we find a table and we need a weird die, I've got one on hand. Now we're getting into the first tables. A is for aquatic. We've got a D12 table with aquatic attributes. Once again, with every entry, you're gonna have some text that gives you a little flavor for just, you know, things to consider for uh, applying an aquatic monster into your campaign. We've got androids with six fantastical androids for your campaign world. A is for armor. With these two images, this brings the only complaint that I have of this book, and that is that it's about the artwork, but not the artwork itself. It has more to do with the layout and formatting. This image right here, I don't know if you can tell, but I can definitely see that the lines are fuzzy. They're not as sharp as this image. It's like this was a smaller image that somebody blew up to fit in this page. I'm just going to hold that up, see if you can tell if that's a little fuzzy and those are super sharp. I'm just, I'm a really big fan of the line drawing style, the old school drawings, and I love really sharp lines and this little fuzzy stuff. It's my only qualm with this book, and it's pretty minor because it's not even in very many images, but there are definitely a couple in here where it looks like they blew it up. B is for blood. This is one of my favorite ones. I love the uh, transmutation table over here, and that's a D12. So we're going to roll on that real quick. Went off the page, but we got a 10, which turns inorganic matters into crystallized salt. So you cut open a monster, you get some blood on you, uh, your sword or whatever is going to turn into salt, and that is awesome. You got some uh, 16 means by which monster blood can manifest unusual effects. Moving on, we got B is for breath weapon. I love this image here. That dragon is just eviscerating a party. That guy's bow is toast. And once again, we've got the artwork that just really incorporates around the table in a beautiful way. Celestials, constructs, classic animated armor, crossbreeds. Uh, I've got a D30 over here somewhere. Do the green one. 28, we got a vine and... I guess you roll on it multiple times. We got a nine here. A dragon vine crossbreed. Why not? That's weird. And speaking of dragons, we're on the dragon page. Got a little excerpt about dragons. We've got some more awesome Mullen art. Eyeballs. This is a D6 times 10 plus D6 table. See if we can even figure out what that means. This image is also one of my favorites in this book. The extra planar tables. Yeah, I love what's going on. All this is coming out of this guy's head. Are these guys inside his consciousness? Crazy. That's another Pogue. I'm not even going to try saying his first name anymore. We've got Flame and Frost. We have some elemental uh, weapons that your monsters can have. That's crazy. Giants, we've got high-powered hordes, infernals, your demons, your uh, hell beasts, all that good stuff. Insectoids, that's another D12 over here. Let's see what we got on insectoid table. A one, all right. A blood-sucking proboscis juts from the creature's face the size and length of an epe, EP? I'm not even, I don't know what that is. We'll have to look that up later. A creature feasts on the precious life juices of any prey it can pin down long enough to pierce with it. Gnarly. Kind of sounds like the uh, brain bug from Starship Troopers, just eating your brain. Up next we've got J's for Jurassic. Um, one thing, that it says use the table below. The table's not below, it's actually on the following page. And it, when we flip over, we've got this very cool table for naming a dinosaur. So, you've got the prefix, some center parts, your suffixes. Let's go with a tri osto mimis tri osto mimis That is a new dinosaur that is about to kill your party. Mimis means mimic, so it's going to mimic something. Sarah's horn, it's definitely going to have a horn. 
So this is just uh, really good for inspiration on creating a new weird dinosaur type monster to kill your players with. Moving over to Kryptonite, your monster has to have some sort of weakness, and this is going to help you figure that out on a D16 table. Monster's got to have a lair, base, bunker. That's going to help you there. Got to have some lore surrounding your monster. Beast is afraid of weasels and cocks. Aren't we all? Just kidding. Lycanthropes, if you want a were creature of some sort, you could have a halfling weasel. Cool. Mimics, once again, these dudes are uh, reading a book on monsters. Maybe they're trying to figure out why uh, the centaur is hanging out with them. Minions. All, all the best monsters have to have minions. You can't just go in there and fight one thing. Noxious for gas attacks. Ongoing damage. Those are the worst whenever you're uh, getting hit with poison or something and it just keeps on hurting you until you die. Don't even get a chance to fight. Oozes, psionics, the ordinary table. You, we're looking at this book because we're tired of all the ordinary things, but don't discount them. Goblins, they're still great. Pegasus, centaurs, you just don't overuse them. Peas for plant, we've got uh, D20, uh, expressions of evil herbage. Do I have a D20 in here? I got a little guy somewhere. See if we can lay that flat. That's a nine. Orchid. So we've got an or evil orchid. Possessions. Your monster's got to have a reason for people to want to go kill it because it's got a vial of earwax. Your players want it. Maybe it's really important earwax. Quills. Gnarly. Reactions. This one's got a little flow chart. Revenge. This is a D30. Let's see. Murderous motives and vindictive vendettas. Once again, Goodman Games coming in hot with all of the alliteration. Rolling off the table on the D30. It was a six. The death of offspring or you killed my father. Classic. R is for resistance. Eight recondite resistances. You got sonic attacks, sonic shields, four descriptors of various vibrations. Sorcery, you've gotta have a spellcasting monster. It's not enough to just slash and hack at you. The tail, any monster that's got a tail attack, just do it, just do it. Especially if it's an assigned bobtail. And unexpected. These are too long, I'm not going to read any of them, but you've got a dozen unexpected powers and properties for your monster. Vampires. Terrifying true facts about vampires. Very, very true facts. And then we've got W is for weird, with a little piece by James Edward Raggy the Fourth. And then we've got this D100 table of weird creature properties. Look at all those. So, I've got my D100. It's probably going to roll all the way off the table, but let's see what we get. Uh, in the spine of the book. And again, one more time. There it goes. It's gone. And it was a 29. 29, swingy in combat. Involving this creature, all failed attack rolls are considered fumbles. That would suck. And then we've got random adventure encounters, and these are all uh, various DCC modules that I guess you can pull an encounter out of if you don't own the adventure. Roll again, but inform your players that they must take a collection and buy the adventure for you, or else their characters will suffer a minor corruption the next session. That's a great way to get some new modules. Ed coming up to wings, got to have creepy wings. Xeno transplantation, 24 fearsome extra body parts. Get that D24 back out. And it's a four. And it's a rhino horn. Why does your creature have a rhino horn? Who knows? Maybe it's an aphrodisiac and your players are trying to get it. We got some yuck tables. We got zombies. These are great zombies. And zoomorphic for making weird animal-human hybrids or whatever you want. Finishing it up, we've got another Kovacs in sheet. 
Looks like the uh, party is getting the upper hand on some monsters. Old peg leg lady here is cutting off someone's head. This lady just shot that guy through the chest and he's dying. Wizard ladies killing people. Everyone in this party is a woman and they're kicking ass. That's awesome. Good for them. This is a great image and I love it. Doug, you are a wonderful artist. And that concludes the book. And so my final thoughts on this is that this might not be a necessity for any game master, but it's definitely something you should look into getting, especially if your party is experienced, they've seen everything in the monster manual, and, you know, they know what you're going to throw at them. You give them another ogre, and they're going to yawn and kill it immediately, because they know what to do. Is it as indispensable as the dungeon alphabet? Probably not. I think this is definitely going to come in handy a little more often than Rolling Up Monsters, but this is definitely a super cool book, and I'm happy to own it. You should go out and buy it, too, at goodmangames.com. Don't get, forget the hyphen. Uh, there's a third of this series coming out, the Cthulhu Alphabet. I kickstarted that, and whenever it comes out, we're going to do a review on that. So there's something to look forward to. And with that... Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoy it, please like this video. Please subscribe to the channel. It's going to help us out a lot. We love making these videos. We hope you enjoy watching them. Always roll up like it's 1974 with 3D6, and we'll catch you next time. I'm Sam, and I am out of here. Later.